Capybara? Oh no, pal, we're selling Happy Barra. And let me tell you, it's the good stuff. Now how about you go ahead and click the linky in the description and prove you're not a cop. Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drink. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. We can all agree that D&D is a social game, right? And since D&D is firmly cemented in the nerdosphere, we can all begrudgingly accept that it attracts some pretty antisocial people, yeah? Okay, now that expectations have been established, how the hell is it so hard for some people to say what they really want in this hobby? I'm no paragon of social etiquette, but for f sake, people, how many of these horror stories could be completely avoided if we just used our god-given ability to communicate and just said what we wanted? It's like when you ask your girl if she wants anything to eat and she replies with, I don't know, anything sounds good. So you just throw something out there that sounds good and she replies with, no, not that one. Listen here, you little sh you can either go to Chick-fil-A in the trunk or the passenger seat, it's your choice. Dungeons and Dragons is much the same way. It's pretty hard to get what you want when you don't tell anyone else what you want. Yeah, sure, if you just start listing off demands, you risk looking like a needy little dickhead, but that sure beats sitting there in depressed silence. If I wanted to do that, I would have just gotten the lobotomy that my doctor recommended. The story I have for you today stars a player who is left in a state of confusion when their DM engages in a game of Mean Girls instead of just flat out telling OP what they want, which is apparently a monumentally disgusting NSFW game of make-believe. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the horrifying world of r slash RPG horror stories. Enjoy. This week's story comes from Reddit user CursiveBernero7 and it's titled DM Acts Like a Mean Girl Instead of Just Saying That I'm Not a Fit for Their Campaign. Earlier this year, I was supposed to play in a campaign of Curse of Strahd, if the username was any indication. However, some drama got in the way of that, and in hindsight, it's pretty funny. So here I am, to regale you with the tale of how and why I didn't get to play Curse of Strahd. Some names for our players. DM. The Dungeon Master. Duh. Barb. Short for Barbarian. Me and her played in a campaign together before. This info is important. Art. Short for Artificer. Another player who told me some additional details after the fact. Fiend. Not a player, but still in the D&D server and happened to hear some choice tidbits from DM. In the beginning, all was well. I was one of the first people that DM asked to join. I hadn't played D&D since a previous group had fallen apart, so getting to play again was exciting. And it was gothic horror? Hell yeah, sign me the f up! I was all ready and had the perfect character for the game, an Oathbreaker Paladin with an obsession with dark magic. I was so hyped to play her. However, before we get to character sheets, DM sends all of us players consent forms. Now, I'm totally cool with consent forms, especially for something dark and gritty like Strahd. The first issue was that this was not Curse of Strahd specific in terms of content warnings. It was a general form that just had most, if not all, uncomfortable topics you can run into in a campaign. So not exactly a great start, but okay. The DM had mentioned wanting to play this accurately, and that this was not going to be a game for the faint of heart. That's fine, I love a spot of guts and gore in my gothic horror. One of our players dropped after hearing about how gritty and edgy this Curse of Strahd was gonna be, and more power to her. This also means we had four players instead of five, which was okay in my opinion, but the DM wanted a party of five. Again, also not a problem, but then I get a message from DM. Hey, can I add Barb in? Like, would you be comfy with that? See, Barb and I had a history, as I alluded to previously. So, of course, my dumbass goes, Yeah, sure, I don't see the issue. Because I was a massive people pleaser at the time. Still trying to break that habit, unfortunately. In reality, there was an issue. I hadn't spoken to Barb since our old group dissolved. And all the drama that that came with. That's a different story though. In short, I was scared that Barb hated me because we didn't leave off on good terms. Oh well, I could play with her in a campaign, that's fine. Everything is fine. Another red flag in hindsight came in the form of the DM saying that there would be no leniency for my mental health getting in the way of the sessions, and that they won't be pausing to let me decompress if I get overwhelmed. 
That's fine, I'm not expecting to be accommodated in every game I play in, I'll just have to deal. This is fine. Everything is fine. They did repeat this boundary of theirs multiple times to me, saying that they won't stop for me and I'll just have to manage, which I found a bit weird, but I know I can be forgetful at the best of times, so I figured the repetition was so that I didn't forget by game time. Oh yeah, did I mention that we hadn't started the campaign yet? No? Well, the campaign never starts if you wanted an indication as to where this is going. The third strike was when I got a message from the DM. Hey, are you sure you're going to be okay in Strad? Me. Yeah, why wouldn't I be? DM. Well, some players are worried about you. They think you'll not be able to handle it. Me. No, I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. I know what I'm getting into. By the way, who was worried? Oh sweet, Selene above, this was the worst thing to say. DM. I cannot say that. Me. What? Side note, they said it like they were under some non-existent NDA. I don't remember the exact words, but I do remember getting anxious and pestering them about it. To be fair, if it was another player that had the issue, foreshadowing, I'd like to talk it out with them. Let them know that I'm gonna be okay so we don't go into the game on awkward footing. Oh, sweet lord, this is some ridiculous levels of cringe. Believe it or not, but I feel for the DM a bit here. Being a DM when there's a person in your party that you don't really want to be there is not an enviable position to be in. The worst is when it's someone that you don't have beef with and just don't think that they're a good fit for the game. Is there really a good way to approach someone and tell them that you don't want them at your table? From what I can tell, you only really got two options here. Option one is gritting your teeth and letting whatever scruples you may have pass out of your body like a kidney stone. I want to guess maybe nine out of ten people are going to go with option one. And if I'm going to be honest with myself, I'm probably at least seven of those people. The whole idea of having to communicate to another person that their presence at a specific setting isn't desired is enough to give me anxiety just thinking about it. And I'm not sure I could do it to be perfectly honest. Option two is just ripping off the band-aid and just being plain with the person. Hey, this is the expectation we have for this campaign we're doing and I don't think it's gonna be something you're gonna enjoy. Hmm. Well, now that I've just said it out loud, it doesn't seem that bad. What the hell was I afraid of? What you for sure don't do is try to play a game of telephone and get everyone else in the group involved, too. Look, I get it. It's an incredibly uncomfortable position to be in. But I guarantee you that you're not gonna be the Machiavellian schemer that you think you are, and trying to pull a light Yagami to remedy the issue is only gonna make it worse and make you look like a weeb, which isn't a good look for anyone. The weeb part, I mean. Being a social idiot comes with a hobby. Eventually, DM confessed that it was Barb who was concerned, and they even were so gracious as to offer to mediate the conversation while Barb and I sort out our campaign concerns with each other. I should note I thought the issue was that I wouldn't be able to handle the content of the campaign. I only have a couple of squicks. Remember this for later, actually, so it should be no problem. Okay, I don't speak Tumblr and I'm gonna assume you don't either, so I went ahead and looked this up. A squick is a blend of the words squeamish and ick. It's like saying you're triggered, but you also want to be cute about it. Not washing your hands after going to the bathroom, that's a squick. The bard playing up the tired Lamau I seduce the dragon joke, that's a squick. Thinking that being an RPG horror story YouTuber is somehow a flex, well, that should be a f***ing felony, but I guess I'll let it slide and just call it a squick. I said as much in the group chat that DM made for Barb and I. The content was not the problem. Now, while I can't recite the whole rant Barb went on for guidelines sake, I can give you lovely readers the skinny. Basically, Barb said how much of a terrible player and person I was, how I hogged the spotlight, and how I couldn't handle our previous campaign, let alone Curse of Strahd. And also, she didn't want to see me ruin this game too, or hurt her friends any further. The friends in question are our mutual friends. Friends that I'm still good friends with, believe it or not. It was bad, to say the least. Though, luckily for me, the mental preparation for the campaign came in handy after all. 
I managed to stay calm enough to defend myself from the bad player allegations and to tell her to f off in regards to the previous campaign that fell apart. However, my strength didn't last long. I asked the DM in direct messages if they thought I would last, and I got the most plastic polite, no, sorry, I have ever read, and decided to drop the campaign. Too tired of this sh to care about what I was missing out on. That's it. That's the end, right? But wait, there's more! There's still two whole characters to introduce! So some time passes and I'm recounting the above to some friends, Art and Fiend, and the two of them join in with some details that I hadn't known before. Art was another player and they told me that DM had, around the time they messaged me Strike 3, asked them if I would last a session. DM's word. They later informed me that the DM had asked all the other players that question, and it was DM who had pressured Barb into her insane rant in my general direction. Holy shit, if they didn't want me as a player, why would they make it so unnecessarily complex? Way to make a worse situation by trying to avoid a mildly uncomfortable chat. Then Fiend chimed in, and oh boy. Remember when I said that I only had a couple of squicks? One of those squicks is discussions of pregnancy. Oddly specific, and I didn't expect it to come up, and I made sure the DM knew about it when we got the consent forms. Apparently, according to Fiend, DM had offhandedly mentioned that we could have gotten a good ending if I didn't have a squick about it. The good ending in question was to give Strahd an heir by impregnating one of the players. Art's player character was the other option other than me, according to DM, and Art was heavily against that too, albeit for unrelated reasons that are not mine to recount. Then there was the plan to kill my character. Less a plan and more an expectation that my PC would die. Fiend explained that this optional murder house side quest was going to stress test the team and pick off the weak players. One of which was predicted to be my paladin. DM thought my PC would have been too stupid to survive, based on some jokes that I'd made about her previously. DM, as far as I could tell, just didn't like my choice of PC, and instead of talking to me about it like a normal human being, devised a stress test quest to kill my character off and force me to use my backup. DM, after I'd told them that I'm dropping Curse of Strahd, offered to run a one-on-one -on -one game for me as a consolation. I turned that down too. Anyway, that's the end for real. Thank you all for reading. TLDR, my dungeon master refused to communicate with me normally, instead opted to play Social Circle Chess to oust me from their campaign. End of story. Well, that was an obscene level of gross. OP, you dodged a f***ing bullet on this one. Now, I've never been in a game that required me to fill out a consent form, but if you ask me, that's kind of a red flag in itself. I'm just a nerd who wants to shoot lightning out of their fingertips, not the chick you met on Tinder after $4 margarita night at Chili's. What the f*** are you planning to do to me if you need my consent in writing? Now, I've also never played Curse of Strahd either because I'm not a huge module guy. If you have played Curse of Strahd, feel free to fill me in down in the comments on whether or not getting pregnant is a step to achieving the good ending, or if our DM friend just decided to go full deviantart on this one. It sounds to me a lot like the DM was trying to have their cake and eat it too, considering how they extended an invite for a one-on-one -on -one game with the OP. But knowing what we now know about what kind of game the DM likes to run, well, let's just say that our Squick Adverse OP would have to have room temperature IQ to accept that invite. But you know something that super intelligent and likable people do? They send me fan art! That's right, how about we take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drink? This week's fan art comes from viewer The Welp and depicts the Drake crying in anguish at the loss of his cringe horde to a bitter enemy. For those unaware, Manscaped somehow approved a sponsorship where me and Larry travel into the woods looking to shoot Sasquatch and take his nuts as a trophy, which mega based by the way, Manscaped. Apparently that sponsor reminded the whelp of a certain scene from Jennifer's Body, which stars Patrick Starr's voice actor. You hear me, you bastard! I'll cut off your nutsack and nail it to my door! Like one of those lion door knockers rich folks got! That will be your balls! 
Thank you again, The Whelp, for submitting your art. If you'd like to see your fan art featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my About section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can inspire artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and send in your fan art. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.